Swinburne University of Technology. Hi and welcome to Swinburne Codecasts. I'm Andrew Kane. And I'm Cliff. And in this video, we'll be looking at how programming concepts apply to different languages. So far, we've been learning the programming concepts and applying them using one programming language. And I'm pretty sure that I've gotten a handle on all of that, Andrew, but uh, how hard is it to pick up a new language? Well, the great thing is most of the concepts are transferable, and primarily it's the syntax that changes, so what you need to type. There are other things that change, we'll look at that, but the big picture stuff stays the same. Well, here's a program that I wrote in Pascal originally. It's a circle moving program. It moves a circle around a screen. Yep. Um, how different would this look or be in C? All right, well, here's the C code. If you have a look at it, what do you think? Uh, well, it looks very similar. Uh, there's some differences I can see here, but it's pretty, like I can understand a lot of it just by reading it. Yeah. I can't see any begins or ends. I see squiggly brace. are they brackets? Yeah. Yeah, these are the big changes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Huge. So, yeah, that's right. I mean, this is the thing. In our programs, in C, you're going to have functions and procedures the same as you have functions and procedures in Pascal. Yep. So in this case, uh, main is a procedure in uh, Pascal. It's actually a function in C, but I think, you know, really. Okay, it's, yeah. Okay. It's not a huge problem to pick that up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Um, we need variables, so we have an integer variable called x here. Okay, is it really scarily different on the other side? It looks like just less writing. Yeah, in this case, because uh, C programmers don't like to type much. Everything's lowercase. Okay, I've, I, uh, I'm being trained to be lazier with my code. Like. Yeah, yeah, int x semicolon. But, so it's the same sort, of, same sort of idea, but the idea is the same, isn't it? Yeah. I needed a variable to store the x value. So it, I made one. I made one. Yeah. And in C, the a special incantation I need to to <laughs> to, to issue is, you know, int x. Okay. Whereas in Pascal, it's integer. Okay. So, so integer. So that's kind of and they've just like reversed the order of the of the identifier and yeah. the and the type there as yeah. well. So. so in Pascal, the emphasis is more on the name. The name is more important. The type is an after. Okay. Know, the secondary thing. So in C, they really want to focus on what the type is, and the name is secondary. Sure. So the, the, the feel of the language is different, but the idea is the same. Sure. Well, um, another thing that I'm, that I'm seeing here is, well, I understand the variables thing. What about, what about the, the if statements? I notice that you don't need to use then. That's right. But the cool thing is if in Pascal is spelt I-F, and it's, in C it's spelt... It's just if. I F oh. exactly. Uh, you do have to have brackets around the condition in uh, C. They're both doing the same thing. I prefer that. That makes it more easily read for me. Yeah. If in in both languages they need a way of identifying where the end of the expression is to know, you know, that's the, the thing you're wanting to check. In Pascal, the then uh, indicates the end of the the expression, and yeah. in C. The open bracket is the start of the expression. The closed bracket is the end of the expression. Sure. Now, uh, now being a um, procedural programming language, everything else is the same? Like it just runs through the same way as other code does? Yep. So it's all still S running. Sequence selection, repetition, Yep. All so these we can things. see we've got, I mean, there are huge, massive, massive differences. Yep. Repeat until oh, doesn't exist in, in C. Yeah. Well, I was going to bring that up. Yeah. It's like. I mean, is that do while? Is that yeah. is that how it translates to? Yeah. Okay. Nobody will ever understand that, you know. Okay. So, so repeat until do while. So okay, yeah, I know. I think yeah. people will get that. Okay, yeah, I know. So <laughs> it, it, it's basically the same. So that's the kind of differences. Uh, you still have the same sort of loop. So you have a post test loop. So this tests at the end. We got the pre test loop. While becomes while. That was that was a hard one. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. In so, terms of language syntax, these are they're basic, basically most languages are this different. Okay. Yeah, they're mostly the same. So if if I got stuck, I could use my like favorite search engine and, and type in like while loop language and it'll probably give me the example anyway, right? That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So once you've got this way, yeah, learning the second language is a bit harder because you've got to realize that well if is still if. 
while is still while. You know, the, the main things are the same. Once you've understood that, mm. uh, it becomes easier because you then just know what you want to look for. I need to look for these things. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So I've actually like done basically all of the most difficult learning already. That's correct. Oh. Yeah. So the concepts are awesome. the cook, keep it. Um, that is, this is true for the same kinds of programming languages. So these are procedural programming languages. Uh, they're the same, so they cover the same sort of concepts. There yep. are functional programming languages and object-oriented languages. They have different sets of concepts. Yep. So they take a bit longer to pick up because you've got to understand how they think programming works. What, okay. what are the main constructs? But for the most majority, object-oriented languages build on procedural. So you've got, you know, I'm, eighty percent of the way there. For I'm those sure we've probably got well. a handy video to explain all that anyway, right? Probably. Yeah. Yeah, we do. Awesome. And um, more to come. Is there is there anything that I should be looking out for? Like, are there any tricks or traps? You know, sometimes you get you get through this and you're like, ah, oh, I'm I'm stuck. Is there anything that I should watch out for? Uh, the main things I think to think about are things like uh, case sensitive. Is the language case sensitive? So Pascal isn't, doesn't actually care whether you mix upper and lowercase things. Yeah. Uh, whereas C is case sensitive, so that can throw up problems. Uh, I think the main difference between languages is not the actual language itself, like the if, while, begin or brace, etc. Yeah. Uh, but the libraries that come with the language. Okay. So here's another example uh, where we're using a, a record, which is a, a struct. I can. Yep. I. I can understand that. That's still just a, so it's a student struct instead of a student yeah. record. Yeah, so we're defining the structure of the record or struct. I think record's a, a nicer way of understanding it, but struct is what C calls it. Okay. Yeah. And I noticed that some of the some of the types are different here. Yeah, so this is these are the things that change. So it's related to the library more than the, the, the language itself. Uh, so the different kinds of types that you might have. I can see how they'd probably relate to the original yeah. example anyway, but yeah, it's... Yeah, slightly different. Yep. Uh, C doesn't have strings, for example, so you, you have actually have character arrays or char a pointer to an array of characters uh, as a way of dealing with that in C. So some languages have some features that others don't. I know exactly what that sentence means now after all these videos too, a pointer to a character array. That's so cool. Yes. If you've been following along, you should oh. understand those terms. Yeah. Putting yeah. them all together. So e the even though I, I don't really use that in, in Pascal, I know how I could use that in other languages, which yes. is awesome. Yeah. What's the idea of all of these videos? Really focus on the key things that are going to help you learn other things. Um, so printf, for example, is a function, actually, yep. in C that prints stuff out to the terminal or to a file if you give it a file. Yeah. Um, well, actually, it's f print anyway. F print after a file. Uh, but that's a uh, the different names for the different procedures. And so, what you might want to look up when you are learning a new language is, you know, how do I print things to the terminal? So yep. it would be, you just got to look for what are the functions and procedures that are available in this language. And there'd be plenty of documentation out there for it, wouldn't there? Yeah. You yeah. got to find the website that has all of the documentation on it, and then look through. Oh, they've got this library that does this. Oh, yeah. look at these functions and procedures. They they look cool. Okay. No, that, uh, it's the that, same idea, it's yeah. just different words. So that's it for learning a new language. Much really, easier than I thought it was going to yeah, be. Yeah, really it's, it's mostly the same sort of things. The concepts are the same, what we type is different. When you are picking up a new language for the first time, it will be a little bit painful because you've got to learn you know, what is the type for integer. Yeah, but, but still, but still less, less work than it took for me to get to this point now. Should be, yes. That's awesome. Yeah. All right, hope you've enjoyed that, and we'll look forward to seeing you again soon. See ya. Bye. This has been a Spindone production.